Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. This is the Sunday garden question and answer video that I do most of uh, Sundays of the month. The first Sunday of every month is a subscriber Sunday video where subscribers send in photos of things in their yard that they're proud of. If you're interested in participating in that video, the email address to send photos is right here. Uh, just title the emails uh, subscriber photos or something like that so I know what they are because I get lots of emails to that account. Also, turn your phone sideways and uh, uh, take it in widescreen if you're taking it with your phone uh, because uh, YouTube is a widescreen format and your photos will show up the best that way. The next one of those will be the uh, first Sunday in February. Uh, I think I got a couple more um, Sundays to do question and answer videos between now and then. I had announced a giveaway for two pairs of snips uh, last week and of course had tons of comments on both YouTube and Instagram. The winners for the uh, on the winner on YouTube is Forever Ethereal. Uh, and the winner on Instagram is Zill Cincy. Uh, I use a random comment picker to pick these. I've shown it several times. I don't want to show it in every video, but I do use a random comment picker. And normally, uh, so many people enter these uh, contests that I, I don't recognize the uh, winner, but both of these I happen to uh, know have uh, made lots of comments on the channels uh, over the years. So again, thanks to everyone for participating. And uh, I'm going to announce uh, two more um, um, two more pairs of snips uh, at the end of the video, how to go about winning those. Let's get started on some questions from uh, last week's uh, video. Somebody asked if they could use grow bags for uh, flowers. They saw my video last year put doing the potatoes in grow bags. And I have an entire video on growing the uh, potatoes in grow bags, and I've just done a video over the course of a year so people could see them go into the bags and then the entire um, process of harvesting them and everything. That way the video um, seemed complete. Uh, so uh, that video will be coming in the uh, next few weeks. Um, uh, I would go ahead and um, uh, if you want to buy potatoes that you're going to use um, to plant potatoes this year, I'd go ahead and do that. Um, and yes, the, the answer to the question is uh, you can grow flowers, shrubs, trees, anything you want to in those grow bags. Just keep in mind, uh, because the, the edge of the bag um, uh, is not solid, uh, the, uh, they dry out much quicker. So anything you're growing in those grow bags is going to require more watering. Uh, that's what I found. Great for growing potatoes, great for growing pretty much anything. Just know that you're going to have to water them a little bit more. Okay, um, somebody asked me about uh, ways to plant in an area that gets extremely wet and then of course can then flip the, the switch and be extremely dry. I was filming um, with Bree Arthur at the uh, Cape Fear Botanical Garden this week. And it, that garden is actually flooded. It's on the Cape Fear River and it's actually flooded a few times, but uh, that soil there is really, really tough. And uh, they're in an area where you can just dig a shallow hole and find water. They plant everything pretty much on top of the ground. You can see every plant in that entire botanical garden is, is on a mound above the ground. And then they're just having, if it gets extremely dry, you're gonna have to irrigate. So you have to plan for, um, you can always fix too dry because you can water, but you can't fix too wet. Uh, and so, uh, you know, keep that in mind. If you've got an area like that, unfortunately, you're going to have to plant everything high and then you're going to have to irrigate um, when it's dry. There's no middle, there's no real good middle solution to that um, because, you know, root rot can't be cured. But, um, you know, a plant losing a few leaves because it was overly dry uh, can be. So uh, um, not a great answer to that one. Mound everything up, make sure the water doesn't kill it. Okay, um, somebody had a couple Encore azaleas, but um, wouldn't matter if they were Encores or whatever kind of plants we're talking about here. They planted them, one is losing a lot of leaves and one is uh, not. Uh, azaleas this year have, have shedded quite a bit. And this, um, I don't know if we can see this, uh, uh, how, how well you can see this uh, uh, sunshine ligustrum right here, but it's actually shedding quite a bit as well. But I see a lot of evergreens uh, leafy evergreen shrubs shedding um, a little heavily right now and I think it may be the amount of water uh, we've gotten. Uh, usually I say uh, this kind of shedding is from not enough water but uh, it's actually uh, uh, it's extremely wet. I'm standing where I'm standing because the grass is just too wet to stand in. Uh, it, it's just boggy over there. I don't, I'm gonna hurt the grass by standing in it. So uh, uh, I have a feeling it's just one of them is staying overly wet. I think it, it will likely be fine. I don't think it'll be an issue as long as you planted them up a little bit. I don't think the crown will rot or anything like that. But I do have a feeling it has something to do with one's wetter and one's drier. Uh, for sure. Okay. Um, somebody asked me if they could use uh, flagstone along a creek because the creek floods 
uh, into their yard and they want to use some sort of field stone, I guess thicker field stone uh, as a barrier. I think um, any kind of flooding creek um, can move any kind of stone uh, whenever it wants to. Uh, the way to do that is probably to put them in the metal cages. Um, and you can you can you can Google this, but uh, there's a lot of a lot of places places where they build retaining walls now, and they actually put the stone into a metal cage. And so you know you can buy these cages or probably make your own out of fencing, uh, and then put the rock into the fence. And that way, it's not one individual rock, but it is a you know a cage uh, that you build. Um, full of rocks and if you google this you can you can see what i'm talking about but uh uh you, you like i say you, you can get some sort of metal fencing and then and create a little box and then uh, put your rocks into it and that way less likely to have a big section um float away than one piece at the time i, I think you would i think it would move smaller rocks around easily uh okay um somebody asked me uh, about spraying for uh deer and rabbits and uh, what is that stuff? Hold on. Okay. All right. I had to walk away for a second. I've been using this liquid fence for the uh, rabbits uh, in the backyard here. I don't have a deer issue. There's a deer occasionally I see in this neighborhood, but I haven't had an issue with the deer. But the rabbits are causing me a lot of problems. Uh, and uh, I'm using this liquid fence. Uh, they eat the pansies and all kinds of things. I am uh, in the process of fencing this in. There's an upcoming question for that, but um, uh, and and I'm gonna f the bottom five boards or so will be solid, so I can keep the rabbits out. But in the meantime, I'm using that liquid fence. It smells awful, um, but you don't have to reapply it all that often. And it works. It's it's worked well. Uh, it has pretty much stopped the damage in its tracks on my uh, pansies uh, for sure. The next question is the fence update question. <laughs> I started cutting the uh, back fence out uh, this morning, and uh, and. Uh, I hope to make progress here on the next week or so. I, this is the number one question on the uh, channel is when am I going to work on this fence because it's the background of all these uh, videos. And uh, I just was out of town. I was out of town three weeks in December, and then uh, it's rained and rained and rained. That space back there where I'm working is is mucky, uh, even uh, on the other side of that fence. But I'm working on it, and here's a bit of the upcoming video for that. So the start of this fence project will answer a couple questions, really, because the number one question I get on the channel is, when are you starting the fence project? And so this obviously answers that. The second question that I get the most probably on the channel is, how do you get so many things done? And I don't know, I'm just one guy. Somebody asked a question about when they could move a couple of peach trees that they planted last year. They planted them in a space where they thought was going to be very sunny, and then of course it became shady during the season because uh, this is a, this is true with a lot of a lot of folks. So when I when I used to sell at the farmers market, uh, you know people work you know away from the home normally, and uh, and you ask them if it's shady or sunny, they got they have no idea. They're not there uh, during the day. So this happens a lot of times. So you plant something and then it turns out it's shadier or sunnier than you thought it was. Anyway, they want to know when they could move these two peach trees. Uh, now is the time. Uh, definitely while they're completely dormant uh, in the winter time, this would definitely be the time to uh, be moving things around that you want to be rearranging in the yard, especially when it's only been in the ground for a year and was probably lightly stressed. It's probably barely going to have rooted in the ground, especially as wet as it was on the east um, this year. Um, Let's see. Somebody has an eastern red bud seedling. They uh, um, uh, started, a, started a red bud from a seed. Want to know when to plant it in the ground. Uh, if you had it, I don't know what size container you rooted it in or what you rooted it in, but once it's rooted out to the edge of that container, it can probably go in the ground. If you're uncomfortable putting it into the ground that small, you could step it up into another container, uh, but don't let it become too root bound in that one container. Once it gets out once you can pull it out of the container and the soil comes with it uh, without falling apart, it either needs to go into another container quickly or go in the ground. And uh, I'd go ahead and get it in the ground, honestly. I wouldn't care if it's four inches tall or six inches tall. Uh, I, would, I would put it in the ground as soon as it will hold the root ball together when it comes out of the pot. Okay. Uh, I get a lot of questions about flamethrower red bud availability. And then I get questions where, you know, people, or comments where people say, I got my flamethrower red bud finally and it's beautiful. Uh, 
everybody's going to want these things and that's the reason you can't find them uh, is because everybody wants them and so it's going to uh, uh, I mean just two years ago people were paying I, I think I can't remember what Bree told me she paid for hers just to be one of the first people that had them but I mean there's you know people were paying hundreds of dollars for very small ones uh, just two years ago and so uh, there's a lot of competition for them uh, but they're, I'm sure people are growing them as fast as they can, but it may be another year or two before you walk into the garden center and just see flamethrower red buds available. Um, you, you know, it's gonna take a while. Okay, uh, people, uh, somebody asked me what seeds I'm starting this month. I actually put up a seed starting video yesterday. Uh, and uh, I've got a crow up here talking, talking quite a bit. I guess you're, you, you guys can hear. Um, I'm just doing cool season vegetables through the month of January, so that's going to be um, uh, all my leafy, all, all my leafy vegetables and broccoli, uh, all the cool season things. Once we get into February, I'll start with peppers. And if you watched that video from yesterday, I talked about how I organize my seeds so I know what seeds I'm putting in next. And so, but it'll be in February before I start putting in my uh, summer vegetables and um flowering things and per, you know perennials herbs all those things but uh, I'll, I'll be showing that on the channel as well uh somebody uh, has some boxwoods being damaged I, I think it was nebraska if i remember the question um from the cold uh from the cold wind during the winter wanted to know when to prune that out i would leave any damaged material on a plant uh until the worst of the cold is over so in march uh even into april before i cut it off uh and uh you know, once you get something that's slightly cold damaged like that, you know, any cold we get moving forward is going to just be amplified on that plant. Um, so I would try to cover them uh, when you can if you're going to get extreme temperatures. Not with snow, obviously, if you cover something with snow. Snow is a great insulator. So if it's going to snow, let it snow and then cover them um, before the cold comes. But you may want to offer them a little more protection the rest of the way and then march um, to actually prune them. Uh, and then uh, uh, last question this week, and then I'll talk about the uh, SNPs. Uh, somebody asked, uh, their bulbs are already coming up, and I always get this question, just tons and tons of questions. I've been shooting at, um, let me see, Bree and I have shot at three botanical gardens in the last week, and we're going over uh, to another one uh, on Tuesday. Those videos are going to start to go up, by the way, on that channel, and I'll announce that channel uh, at that point. Um, one may even go up before today's, uh, before today's over. Uh, but... Uh, Every botanical garden I'm going to, and in this yard right here where I'm standing, um, daffodils and tulips and all of my a lot of the bulbs I've already planted are already coming up. It's no big deal. Uh, don't worry about it uh, at all. If you're in an extremely cold area and they jumped ahead, like you were in zone four, uh, I might throw some leaves or something over them. But for those of you in zone seven and you know six, seven, and eight where I'm at, it's normal for your bulbs to pop up through the ground a little bit uh, and then go, why did I do that? Um, but they'll be fine, uh, no, no problem at all. Okay, uh, so I'm gonna give away two more pairs of the uh, uh, SNPs uh, this week. Uh, if you'll go over to uh, Instagram, uh, I will put up some sort of a post um, with me holding these. Again, just like I did last week, just make a comment below that post and then make any comment below this video uh, for a chance to win. It can be a question for next week's question and answer. It can be, um, anything doesn't matter it can just be a question mark uh, whatever it doesn't matter it literally doesn't matter because the random comment picker doesn't care what your punk comment is uh, and again next Sunday uh, I'll draw uh, two more names for these two pairs and I'll announce two more uh, at that time thanks for following along